Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today we are following up on our initial RTX 3070 Founders Edition review by looking at a custom card from MSI and it is again the Gaming X Trio. Priced at £540 here in the UK, this RTX 3070 probably looks more like a 3080 or even a 3090 in terms of its sheer size as it has an absolutely massive cooler. MSI has also boosted the power limit for this GPU to 240 watts and raised the rated boost clock as well, up to 1830 MHz, which is an increase of 105 MHz compared to the reference clock. Today, we put this card through its paces and find out whether or not it is worth that extra £70 over the baseline MSRP. Before we get into that though guys, I just want to say if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell just so you can stay up to date with all of our videos. Thank you. Starting first then with a look at the design of the 3070 Gaming X Trio. On the face of it, it looks essentially identical to the 3080 Gaming X Trio we have already reviewed. In fact, I am almost positive that they are using exactly the same shroud although as we will see later on, the actual cooler of the card has changed slightly. Still, this means we have a mostly black and grey plastic shroud, and personally I think it looks pretty good. It does have a fairly aggressive gamery design, but I do quite like that, although of course this is going to be subjective. Regardless, it is a very colour neutral design, so you won't have any issues installing this card in a colour coordinated system. It is definitely a very large RTX 3070 though, and I think that is only exacerbated by the fact the 3070 Founders Edition was actually pretty compact, as that card measured in at just over 240mm long. With the 3070 Gaming X Trio, this model actually measures in at 323 by 140 by 56 millimeters. Again, it is so big, MSI also includes a support bracket in the box to prevent any of the dreaded GPU sag. Personally, I'm never too bothered about the actual size of the card, but I'm only really pointing this out as compared to the 3070 Founders Edition, it does look incredibly overbuilt. But as we will see later on in this video, hopefully the gains will be worth it in terms of the thermals and the acoustic performance. In terms of the backplate now, MSI is once more using what it calls the graphene composite material here. And credit to Wizard from Tech Power Up who actually found that this is just plastic coated with graphene. Uh, so I really just would prefer a full length metal backplate here. This is actually what MSI did for its 3090 Gaming X Trio and there are even a couple of copper heat pipes on that to aid dissipation. The graphene composite doesn't look bad from an aesthetic standpoint but compared to a proper full length metal backplate, it's obviously not gonna feel as premium and I can't imagine the thermal benefits are nearly as great. Moving on though, we can also see this card requires two eight pin power connectors, which will be more than enough considering the 240 watt power limit of this card. And then we have the standard allocation of display outputs. So there's three DisplayPort 1.4a and then one HDMI 2.1. Opening up the card now to have a look at the PCB, here we can note a few things. First of all, we have a nine phase VRM for the GPU using on-semi NCP302045 stages, which are rated for 45 amps average current and peaks up to 75 amps. Those stages are driven by a NCP81610, which is a maximum eight phase PWM controller. So it looks like MSI is using power stage teaming here as we cannot identify any PWM phase doublers on board. We can also see that the memory is driven by a UPI US5650Q controller with high and low side dual end channel MOSFETs used. The memory modules themselves are from Samsung, which is also the case for my Founders Edition module. And of course, these are specified to run at 14 gigabits per second. We can also note the pretty small GA104 GPU, which has a die size of 392 millimeters squared. As for the cooler now, here things do deviate from the 3080 Gaming X Trio. That card had six six millimeter heat pipes and then one eight millimeter heat pipe. But with the 3070, we don't get that eight millimeter pipe. So it's just six six millimeters nickel plated copper heat pipes. Instead of two larger fin stacks on the 3080 as well, 
with the 3070 there's three smaller ones. Those six heat pipes still make direct contact with the GPU die, but unlike the 3080, there's no additional plate to contact with the memory, which previously sat on top of the central GPU mounting area. So that is it for our look at the card and the PCB, and now let's talk performance. As always, all of our testing was done on our custom built system provided by PC Specialist, featuring an Intel i9-10900K overclocked to 5.1 GHz on all cores. That is paired with an Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard and 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory running at 3600 MHz. Starting off with thermal performance then. Here it immediately becomes obvious that using a cooler as large as MSI has done, even if it's actually missing a heat pipe compared to the 3080 Gaming X Trio, is going to be more than good enough for dealing with a 240 watt GA104 GPU. As we can see, GPU temperature peaked at just 62 degrees during my testing, and that is a superb result and will surely take some beating from other AIB cards, although at the moment, the 3070 Gaming X Trio is the only custom card we have tested. In terms of noise levels, the 3070 Gaming X Trio is still right up there with the quietest cards we have ever tested. We recorded noise output at 34 decibels, which matches that of the 3080 Gaming X Trio, and means the card is effectively silent once installed in a case. It is really, really impressive stuff. Default fan behavior as well, in case you are interested, sees those three fans spin up to just 1400 RPM or 42%. As for power now, here we can see total system power draw is a bit higher than the Founders Edition to the tune of almost 30 watts. As mentioned, the 3070 Gaming X Trio has an increased power target of 240 watts and when looking at GPU only power draw, it actually pulled 238 watts on average, so pretty much bang on with its limit. Compared to the 3070 Founders Edition, this is an increase of 22 watts. MSI uses this extra power headroom to boost clock speed, and our comparison graph shows the Gaming X Trio operates a fair bit faster than the Founders Edition, spending most of its time between 1950 and 1995 MHz. Averaged over the 30 minute stress test, the GPU recorded a frequency of 1960 MHz, which is 85 MHz faster than the average for the Founders Edition. As for how much difference that extra clock speed makes in the real world, here we're going to look at a few select titles at 1440p. We do have 1080p and 4K data, but for that you will need to head over to the written review on kitguru.net. Starting first with control, here we can see the Gaming X Trio averaged 78 FPS at 1440p, and that is actually the lowest average frame rate we saw from this GPU at that resolution. This is still a 3 FPS advantage over the Founders Edition though, and that works out as a 4% improvement. Death Stranding doesn't see as big a jump forward for the MSI card though, as frame rates increase by 2% compared to the Founders Edition. That's a jump from 133 to 135 FPS, so hardly a significant change at all. In Gears 5, it's more of the same. The Founders Edition averaged 100 FPS at 1440p, and the Gaming X Trio hits 103 FPS, so that's a 3% improvement, but hardly a game changer. Next up, we look at Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and here we can see the Gaming X Trio averaging 104 FPS, which is two frames faster than the Founders Edition. That also works out as just a 2% boost to the average frame rate. Finally, Total War Saga Troy demonstrates the smallest difference between the Gaming X Trio and the Founders Edition. Here, MSI's card is just one frame faster, which works out as a lead of a single percent. Overall then, the extra frequency for the Gaming X Trio doesn't really net it any significant gains over the Founders Edition, but it is on average 2% faster at 1440p and 3% faster at 4K. It may not be much, but it is actually enough for the 3070 Gaming X Trio to edge ahead of the RTX 2080 Ti at 4K, where it is 1% faster on average. 
the 3070 Founders Edition was actually 2% slower on average at that resolution. Of course, we did also try our hand at manual overclocking and we also saw some decent results. We got some pretty impressive numbers from our 3070 Founders Edition and the same is true for the Gimi X Trio. MSI lets users bump the power limit up to 104%, which is another 14 watts or so, and we were able to add an extra 120 MHz to the GPU core and 1300 MHz to the Samsung G6 memory, bringing total speeds up to 16.6 gigabits per second. In Gears 5, this overclock netted us an extra 8% or 5 FPS on average, while Ghost Recon Breakpoint saw an extra 9% in terms of the average frame rate. Best of all though was the 11% boost we saw in Total War Saga Troy. We've only tested two RTX 3070s so far, but at this point it seems the GPU definitely overclocks better than any 3080 that we have tested. All in all then, the RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio is another highly impressive card from MSI. It runs very cool, it is dead quiet, and it also offers a small improvement over the Founders Edition in terms of its frame rates. Yes, it is a bit more expensive at £540, but that is still well below starting prices for the RTX 3080, and personally, I would pay an extra £70 over the baseline MSRP, considering the all-round quality on offer from the Gaming X Trio. Right now, we are really just waiting for RDNA 2 to see what AMD has to offer. I'm actually filming this video ahead of AMD's announcement on October the 28th, so I don't really know what they're going to announce. But even if I did, we still need to wait for reviews to see just how fast their upcoming GPUs are. Ultimately, that means right now, we just can't really tell you whether or not to buy a 3070 or get something from Team Red. That is just going to have to wait until we get our hands on AMD's new GPUs and are able to put them through their paces. What we can say right now though is the MSI RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio is a fantastic RTX 3070, beating out the Founds Edition in pretty much every metric. Whether or not you should buy one, again, we're just going to have to wait and see what AMD has to offer. That is going to do it for this review though guys, so if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up let me know your thoughts down below. Would you pay an extra £70 for this card from MSI? While you're down there, why not check out our Discord, which is linked in the description. And it'd also be awesome if you guys would consider backing us on Patreon, where we run some exclusive giveaways and you can see some of our content early. That is going to do it for this one though, guys. So I've been Dominic for KitGuru and I'll see you in the next video.